over time the ignition coil really hasn't changed in its design maybe its shape and configuration but that's only to make it more compact to fit the windings may have changed to give a higher output the thing that has made the ignition system come forward is the switching mechanism in this particular case it's an ignition module i'll show you how it works i'll just connect it up and if we rotate our distributor as the distributor rotates the high voltage from the ignition coil goes up to the rotor button it's then transferred or distributed across to the appropriate spark plug at the right time i've made a cutaway of the distributor cap as you can see and if we cruise on inside we can see the motion of the rotor rotor button that is as it goes around but just notice what you see inside as it rotates what do you see you see a big spark in there don't you the reason is every time this rotates voltage has to come from the ignition coil down through this little carbon brush in here it goes around to the center point of the rotor button then the rotor button distributes each high voltage charge i guess you could say to each terminal on the distributor cap which in turn goes to the appropriate spark plug to be fired but if we think about it all this voltage that's used to jump this gap can't be used at the spark plug can it we're losing voltage these are thousands of volts that are being dropped across that air gap before it gets to the spark plug it's not a very efficient system on this particular model the switching mechanism is still used on the distributor shaft if we pull the cap back there we'll just get this out the road so you can see it pull off our rotor button get this cover off here and in behind there is our switching mechanism this is an inductive pickup in other words it's magnetized part of it's magnetized and you can see in the background there's a coil of wire and as this um, metal star wheel goes around and around it distorts the magnetic field thereby inducing we know that term in induction don't we inducing a small current inside that coil and it should give us an ac signal let's have a look at it with the oscilloscope on the side here under this cover is what's called an ignition module how does that work you can see that there are four wires one two three four there's two black wires and there's a red one and a green wire i've been able to locate an ignition module uh, diagram that gives me all the details of the types of what they are ours is a type c this type c module as you can see here is noted over here as an inductive pickup so what does the inductive pickup do what sort of signal should we expect from an inductive pickup even though it's got five connections listed here the base is actually the module ground and that's where this here is connected you can see this little square here that's actually the ground point for the module if we have a look at the generator it says the generator positive and generator negative number three and number seven on our module they're the ones that we're going to hook up to we're not even going to connect it to the module we're not going to put power to it we're simply going to turn it over with these two three and seven connected to the oscilloscope so if we hold that one there we should be able to get off our three and seven hopefully there we go we've got those two off what is an inductive pickup or an inductive generator all it is is a coil of wire so what do you think we could check for to make sure that that wire wasn't broken let's do a continuity check that'll tell us if the wire is broken or not so i'm connected to my three and i'm connected to my seven and you can clearly see that we have one kilo ohm of resistance why is it so high well this little wire has really really tiny windings and there's lots and lots of them just like our ignition coil so i now know that the inductive generator doesn't have a broken wire this continuity what's our next step the thing is with an inductive pickup generator whatever you want to call the thing it doesn't need power put into it because it creates its own voltage simply by a magnet and some sort of interrupter in this case we've got a little star wheel that's the interrupter and you can see over here all i've done is hook up my oscilloscope to either side of that wire coming out of that wire coil there and you can see that this is magnetized it's grabbing onto my screwdriver and the other side here is connected to the other side of the coil so once again i have no power going into it whatsoever simply one end of the coil 
going into here, roundy, 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 comes out and then the other end goes onto my oscilloscope. What sort of pattern am I getting? If I just reach over and rotate the distributor like that, what sort of signal are we getting on the oscilloscope? And is it any good? Just notice that this is set to plus or minus 10 volts. So remember, it'll be an AC signal. So we've got 10 volts negative and 10 volts positive. Let's see how high we can get just turning it over by hand. Look at that, it's over 10 volts that we're getting out of it. Impressive. Let's just go backwards and see what we can find. As the star wheel comes up to the inductive point, I guess you could say, it creates a positive voltage. As you can see here, it rises. Gets to a point where it can't go any further, then it starts to drop. It gets to that zero point where no voltage is made whatsoever. And as it goes past it, it actually creates a negative voltage. And then it goes on to the next one, etc., etc. I've now got it set at 20 volts, plus or minus. I'm going to use an electric drill this time to make it more consistent. Let's see what sort of voltage we can get out of it this time. Remember, there's no power going into this thing, purely an inductive generator. So what did we end up with? There we go, look at that, it's well over 20 volts. Let's see how high it goes. Let's try 50 volts next. So if we drag our cursor down, some of these peaked out at, what's that, 38, 39 volts. Pretty impressive considering all it is is a coil of wire wrapped around a shaft with a star wheel that goes around past a magnetic field. So you're probably thinking to yourself, oh, well, that's well and good inductive pickup. So what? How's that going to help fire my coil at the right time? Well, that's where this ignition module comes into play. In fact, inside, deep inside, you'll find a thing called a MOSFET, something similar to this. MOSFET, what's that stand for? Metal Oxide Semiconductor Field Effect Transistor. No wonder they called it a MOSFET. Okay, so what's the goal of this thing and how does it work? Remember when we did relays, what was the purpose of a relay? To pass a small amount of current across an electromagnetic field so that a big switch could be closed to allow high current to pass. That's exactly the same as what a MOSFET does. Remember here we had 85 and 86 and that would pass a very small amount of current through this electromagnet. That in turn would close this switch allowing voltage or negative, whatever you've put there, on pin 30, allow it to go to pin 87. The MOSFET does the same job. A MOSFET is a tiny bit different. It has a gate, a drain, and a source. The drain could be compared to a pin 30 on a relay. The source could be compared to a pin 87 on a relay. And the gate could be a combined effort of pin 85 and 86. That's how that works. High current passes through these two by switching on this little fella here. They can be either N-channel or P-channel MOSFETs depending on how you want to trigger it by applying positive to this pin or by applying negative to this pin. You can see that numbers are listed on the module itself. What's this 15 over here? And the next one would be uh, 16. And then there'll be the three and seven over there. According to our ignition module pin configuration chart here, Ignition positive is 15 and coil negative is 16. Once the internal MOSFET is triggered by this inductive pulse generator, uh, we have a positive on one side of the coil and the negative is being triggered on the ignition coil. To make this thing work, I'll have to put the earth screw back into the module. Put our wires back on our inductive pickup. The wires will only go on one way. There's a, a small tab here and a large tab here designed for the inductive pickup. Even without applying power to this thing, there's enough inductive kick in it to light up my little LED a little bit. Can you see the light flashing? Okay, enough fiddling around, let's get serious. Okay, so how do we test this beast? How do we make sure that it's working correctly? We've already proved that our inductive generator is okay. Check out the wear in the shaft in this thing. No wonder it's a bit knackered. We are able to get an oscilloscope pattern off those two wires, even when they were disconnected off the module. And we could even get a tiny, tiny little LED light to glow, couldn't we? 
just because of that inductive kick that came out of rotating this magnetic field with a star coil or a star wheel going past it to interrupt that magnetic field. What's the other section that we can check? Remember this fella over here? That was pin number 15, wasn't it? That was ignition positive. So if I make sure that I have a good ground of some description, we can put it right there. When the ignition is turned on, I should have power there, shouldn't I? Which I do. Should use a multimeter and double check your work, shouldn't you? Hmm, not a bad idea, I might do that. Why am I going to all the effort to check the voltage? The LED lit, didn't it? Well, the LED only requires about three volts to actually fire up. But if we have a voltage drop of some description, that's going to make our ignition system fail, isn't it? So let's see what we have here. We have 12.63 volts. Excellent. So I know that this voltage coming into here, our ignition side of things from the ignition switch is in good condition. The next thing's a little more tricky. I now need to put my LED clamp, which we would normally associate with an earth, onto the positive side of the ignition module right here. And now I can put my LED test light right there and we should be able to see some sort of triggering when I rotate it. See that? That tells me several things. Firstly, that the inductive generator is working okay and my ignition module is working okay. The earth point here is okay. So if it wasn't firing, if our car wasn't getting any spark, it could possibly be the ignition coil, it could be the distributor cap, it could be the plug leads, or it could be the plugs. But I know that from here, it's working okay, apart from a worn shaft, that is. So this is an inductive pickup, which is certainly better than the Kettering points, isn't it? It's able to trigger a solid state or semiconductor designed um, module, which in turn is able to more accurately trigger our ignition coil.